2024. So welcome to May. We have successfully entered into a very different chapter of the calendar, especially seeing as May provides us with a slower pace, with a little bit more steadiness, a little bit more stability in order for us to gain our bearings, if you will, from that wackadoodle April that we all just lived through, that we all just survived, mostly because again, that was eclipse season overlapping with Mercury's retrograde. May being the fifth month in the modern day calendar would suggest that we're working with our heart space. We're finding this new version of self. What makes this new version of self happy, feel safe and secure, what we want to do, what we want to pursue. We are operating from our most authentic self yet. But of course, the astrological calendar, we're still in Taurus season. That's the second month, which means that we're looking to stabilize. That two energy is stability. It is foundation. It is structure. It is realizing, again, where it is that we need to stabilize before we start building towards new wants, new goals, new dreams. Now, May is going to be what I consider crazy and chaotic, just in a different way compared to April, because of course, April, the energies were swirling. Everything was crazy. Everything was chaotic. We didn't know if we were up or down, coming or going. And again, eclipse season, retrograde energy definitely created a whirlwind of energies. May, as far as I'm concerned, is crazy and chaotic due to the fact that many of us human beings really do not handle change that well. May is an opportunity to actually see the physical changes, not only in our physical body, not only in our physical environment, but within ourselves actually manifest. Whatever got triggered and activated, inspired and initiated in April is coming into fruition, coming into manifestation here in the materialistic realm here in May. So that in itself is a crazy chaotic energy. Although we want change, although we need change, sometimes when the change is happening, we tend to lose ourselves. So lucky for us coming into May, we're still in this Taurus energy. We just had Mercury go direct. We are getting focused and concentrated on what needs to be done, what we want to do, what we want to pursue from here. We just had Venus enter into her rulership in Taurus energy, stabilizing our inner realm of emotion getting in touch with our heart space, what it is that we need in our lives to be happy, to feel safe, to feel secure. We just had Mars move into his rulership here in the Aries energy, kicking off a two year hero cycle, meaning he's resurrected, he's reborn. We're gifted with the green light, go ahead to take action and make moves. As long as our heart, Venus and head, Mercury, are in alignment to engage the physical body, Mars, to take action and make moves on things that we've thought very carefully, very thoroughly about. So we're definitely getting off to a good start here in May. May begins on a Wednesday, that is Mercury ruled, and we are having the last quarter moon take place in Aquarius energy, which means that we're looking back to the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries energy, April 8th. We're exploring all of the changes in our mind space, in our heart space, in our physical realms. We're reevaluating, we're processing it all from the highest form of our intellect. Again, Aquarius energy acts as the observer. We're able to emotionally detach to see things as they are instead of the way that they, we wish that they would be. And because of that, we are able to kind of see what we have to do, what we have to improve, what it is that we could be doing better, where it is that we have to break away and fully collapse from some of the blockages from some of the old ways of doing things. Again, we just had this new version of self emerge, but the realm, the reality that the old version of self has built and created is still very much alive. So we're in this awkward adjustment period. But having May begin on a Mercury ruled day that rules our lower intellect while we're having the last quarter reevaluation moon phase in Aquarius energy is bringing the highest form of intellect and the lowest form of intellect together. We're blending our options, our opportunities on what we have power and control over here in the present moment to actually do and pursue that will lead us to this new goal, this new vision, this new dream dream. 
May 2nd, Pluto, the great transformer himself, is going to go retrograde at two degrees in Aquarius energy. So Pluto is very much trying to wrap up this little story of his. He will be retrograding back into the Capricorn energy over the next couple of months. We're going to be sitting at that 29th critical crisis degree with those power struggles that we've been sitting in trying to deconstruct, trying to collapse since 2008. Pluto will be re-entering into Aquarius energy November 19th of 2024, and that will be the final time that we will ever touch that Capricorn energy in our lifetimes. We will be set up in Aquarius energy until 2044. But Pluto, when retrograde, takes us on an inner journey an inner reflection on what we have to change, what we have to transform, especially where our egoic programming is concerned. This is a power struggle between the old version of self, the new version of self, the old ways of seeing things, the new ways of seeing things. That Aquarius energy is a new level of consciousness and awareness that we're now operating from. And from that perspective, we're easily able to see the darker parts within ourselves that are blocking us from actually moving on actually moving forward. So we're going to have over the next couple of months, an inner upgrade of the operating system to now match the vibration and frequency of the goal, the vision, the dreams, the mission that we are setting out to pursue. We're going to have the new moon in Taurus pop off on May 7th. That is definitely going to be a slow, steady accumulation and realization of all the things that we're no longer attached to, we're no longer wanting to experience, we're no longer wanting to pour into. And of course, in that frustration of just banging our head against a wall, not wanting to continue to do the same old, same old, we are going to come up with an alternative. That is how new intentions are made new seeds get planted if you will in that lunar cycle we're focused on our physical realm we're focused on what makes us happy who makes us happy we're focused on what we could do to kind of create more happiness more joy more instances of pleasure in our physical realm what we need to do to build safety and security in our emotional mental and physical realm as well especially where relationship dynamics and money matters are concerned that new moon in Taurus officially closes the door on the new moon total eclipse energy that we have been sitting in since April 8th. So we're returning to normal lunar programming and we're even more present. We would have at that particular point merge the fragmented pieces left over from the old version of self kind of stepping down we are operating from a sense of wholeness we're operating from a completion version of self and now we're focused on what we can do what we can build what we can create in our physical realms to bring heaven to earth in our own little slice of paradise now on the 13th, we are officially out of Mercury's post retrograde shadow period. So we're up to snuff, we're up to speed. The clarity should start kind of peeking in and poking through. And on the 15th, Mercury is going to move into Taurus energy. So when Mercury is in Taurus energy, we put the blinders on. We have to get hyper-focused tunnel vision in on what needs to be done what we want to build, what we want to create, what we want to do, what we want to pursue. Especially, we're building ourselves up in new narratives, new self-worth, new routines are concerned. Especially, we're having some conversations and communicating fully, expressing our true, real, authentic self with passions, wants, needs, and desires, especially in relationship dynamics are concerned. And we're really focused on our money matters, whether or not we have to kind of revamp the budget, whether we can kind of, you know, tap into new skills, new talents in order to create new income streams. We're basically focused on what needs to be done to get rid of the old and start building towards the new. Now, where communication is concerned, Mercury is only kind of speaking on the things that were, are worth speaking about. We're not really that affectionate. We're a little bit more logical, practical, matter of fact, and to the point, which really could be used at this particular juncture. 
The downside is, is that sometimes with blinders on, we miss opportunities that are going on outside of our perspective, outside of our peripheral view. And so although we might be focused on an end goal and think that the path, the plan, the strategy that we have conjured up is the best way to go, if we're too tunnel vision, we could actually miss some opportunities to advance ourselves on that path a little bit more quickly, a little bit more efficiently. We could also miss some other options and opportunities to have fun, to enjoy ourselves and to create new forms of foundation structure and stability in our physical realm. So we want to be cognizant. We want to be aware of that as well. Also on the 15th, we have the first quarter moon popping off in Leo energy. So the first quarter moon is a time of action, of decision, of initiation. Leo energy is the heart and soul of the Zodiac. So we're operating from our heart space. We're operating from our most authentic self. We are operating from a new creative life force energy. And we are going to find ourselves in a situation where we're bold and brave and courageous enough to put ourselves out there in ways that we would have hesitated to do in earlier instances, especially with the old version of self that we now feel really well equipped and prepared to do. So that is definitely going to be not only a change of mind, but a change of heart and getting the heart and head in alignment, a change of path, a change of direction, which is very much welcomed. This fast forwards us to the 20th when the sun will be moving into Gemini energy, initiating Gemini season. So Gemini season is, of course, a mutable air sign. Mutable signs are all about kind of exploring different options, different alternatives, as long as we're being presented with information, facts, proof, evidence, details, we're able to kind of deviate from the path. Now, the Gemini energy being represented by the twins is going to offer us some dualistic, polarized options and opportunities for us to decide who we're operating as either the old version of self under the old egoic programming or the new version of self under this higher influence, this newer mission, this newer truth, this newer purpose. Either way, Gemini season brings a lot of information and a lot of pressure to the mental plane. We're going to have to sort through, reevaluate different thoughts, different ideas, different perspectives. It's a high time of communication, of curiosity. We're looking outside of the norm because again, through Taurus season, we are anchoring in this new version of self. We're gaining our middle ground. We're anchoring in to stability and then the Gemini energy offers us a little bit of time to kind of move out into the world to see what piques our interest from here, what we want to dabble in, what we want to explore. Again, giving us plenty of options to kind of weigh the pros and cons of each alternative and find ourselves in a common middle ground. The 23rd, we are going to have the full moon in Sagittarius. We're also going to have Venus moving into Gemini energy. So first of all, the full moon is a full illumination of hidden information and details finally coming to the surface, revealing a different perspective, a different path, a different direction. Sagittarius energy is very optimistic. It's very confident because we're seeing a new perspective unfold. We're seeing a new truth, new mission, new quest, new purpose unfold. The quest for knowledge, the quest for authenticity is alive and well. And this is actually going to be the point in our path where we're going to have another option and opportunity to kind of set ourselves up for a new quest, a new adventure. Now, Venus moving into Gemini energy, the curiosity in our relationship dynamics are coming back. Communication is definitely a major focus. We're looking for variety. We're looking for something new. We are attracted to intellectual concepts and situations where we can kind of gain new perspectives through listening to other people's thoughts and opinions and ideas, especially where relationship dynamics and money matters are concerned. Having these two events kind of overlap is definitely going to be a major change in our perspective of where it is that our heart and our head are now kind of taking two different paths and where it is that we're planning to meet back in the middle. 
The major event taking place in May is taking place on the 25th. This is when Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, will be moving out of the Taurus energy that it's been in since May of 2023, and we're moving into Gemini energy. So first of all, we have to expect that there's going to be major information overloads happening. You wanna talk about the very, very beginning part of disclosure, Jupiter in in this Gemini energy for the next year is definitely going to be that. There's going to be a major emphasis on new information coming in, changing the way that we think, changing the way that we understand the world around us, changing our thoughts, changing our opinions. Again, it's a mutable energy, so change is the name of the game. We have a lot of wisdom and knowledge that we have accumulated within building the relationship with our higher self that now is going to get challenged in a certain in respect with the information, the facts, the proof, the evidence coming out into the world. There's going to be a magnification on communication styles, really being able to be open-minded and learning from one another. There's going to be an overwhelming amount of energy, of information swirling in order for people to challenge what it is that they thought was true. Spiritual psychosis, again, Saturn being in Pisces energy, we knew that this was going to be a thing, but you want to talk about the amount of just normal intellectual chaos that will likely ensue under this particular influence. Now, I'm not saying that it's all bad because we definitely deserve the truth. We definitely deserve the facts, the evidence, the proof, the details to kind of you know, present themselves so that we can formulate and discern what is true, what is right for us. But it is going to be a very interesting year to watch unfold, especially with a lot of the other uh, the other energetic dynamics kind of popping off. And we are going to have a totally different picture of what some of the situations and circumstances, what the truth actually is. So definitely stay in tune to watch that particular transit unfold. And of course, we're going to wrap the month up with the 30th when we have that last quarter moon popping off, this time in Pisces energy. So this will be a reflection back to that new moon in Taurus energy, all that has changed, all that has transpired under that particular lunar phase. And of course, Pisces energy is super cleansing, super healing, super transformative, especially where our spiritual soul contracts are concerned. So it is likely at that particular point in the calendar that we are going to know a lot more than we knew coming into the month, because again, we're waiting for Mercury to kind of clear his post retrograde shadow period. But we're going to have a, I'm going to say, new path, a new direction, a new sense of self, a new calling for us to pursue. And again, throughout Gemini season, being presented with options and opportunities to put in power and in control the version of self that we want to lead into this next karmic chapter. So that is May in a nutshell. I am going to recommend that you download your Zodiac forecast so that you understand where these particular energy events will be impacting your life, what area of your life the most. And of course, there are e-guides out there for your downloading pleasure to help you navigate all of these energy shifts throughout the month. So if you are wanting to do the work, wanting to dissect where this is going to really catapult you into new areas of abundance, new areas of options and opportunities, definitely tap into those particular resources. But if you're ready, let's jump in. Let's see what each of these astro shifts are actually going to mean for us. 